probably want to go back to the district team because just because... Oh, I love that. The cool. district team, you talk about the different people in the district team, and we talked previously in regards to individuals in the district team that have gone on to be mm. players, coaches, and now developers themselves in terms of coaches. And... And your your kind of work with the FA and you travel around and you develop and support coaches. Um, is there things you see in regards to potential of coaches? Is there things that you see or is there things that you think, do you know what, long term, I think that person is going to be a good developer of young people? You would... You... The obvious thing to say is, oh, yeah, I see leadership in him, you know. So yeah. you say, I see leadership in him, so he's <laughs> going to be a captain. Yeah. Oh, I see this in him, yeah, because oh, he, he would make a good coach because he understands the game. Well, I don't think there's a pattern to it. Mm. I think that players, some players, are playing and don't show any traits of being a good coach or not mm. until they stop or they suddenly appear. Mm. You just don't see them. Mm. Um, like... Uh, Justin Cochran, who's taken the under 16s, was in my district team. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he takes the England under 16s. Omar Rizzo. Yeah. Rizzo, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was dotted around it. And a lad called David. Well, he never got in the district team. Yeah, he did, yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, but. No, he's good. And uh, Dave Livermore, I think, uh, who's, who's become a coach somewhere, he, he was in one of my district teams. And wow. Carlton Cole was in my county team, so on and so forth. But, or a county team that. I was involved with but if I just take Justin as an example black lad yeah, yeah good footballer yeah was at QPR and I think it was Chelsea or wherever he was and uh, I don't know no idea and then he pops up as a coach yeah so I don't know I can't I can't know I can't say he, you know I'm going to target him However, you can then go to ex-pros who are 30, 28, 29, 30. You yeah. know, once they've got past their sort of, uh, their crisis, you know, their teenage crisis and all that. In football. And they start, yeah, <laughs> and they start to settle down. You then start seeing, yeah, I want to go into the... You see the ones who want to go in this yeah. direction. I'm not sure if you're seeing kids, young, young, young people. I'm not mm. sure they're still involved in football. If you'd have asked me at 20 and want to be a coach, what are you talking about? Mm. What's that? Yeah, I don't want to coach. I want to play. Yeah. And that's the thing. I want to they go as long want, as I can. They want to play. And the thing, our skill is to keep telling them, you've got to keep playing because that's where you become a better coach. Like, just keep playing. Yeah. There's, two, there's a lot of coaches that give up playing too early and they got because they think they have to go and, right, I'm, I'm not going to play at this level, this level, so I'm going to go and coach. No, play, keep playing. Keep playing till your legs drop off. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, Very in answer to your question, I can't, you can't... Maybe one or two, but they come later. Yeah. It's, 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 it's sort of a career path that you can see later. Oh, I've never seen anything early on. Mm. Yeah, so... It's very interesting, very interesting. That district team must have been... Oh. Win everything. No, 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 no. We played with two number 10s. <laughs> in 19... I don't know what it was. 44 or whatever it was. <laughs> we played two number 10s. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't call them number 10s. It just said two number 10s, no centre forward. Yeah. yeah. And, and we just, I just messed around with it because I had two players that were really clever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, I think Justin was one of them. And, uh, and Omar wasn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> he was wasn't. fast. He was he fast. He was fast and furious. Yeah, yeah. But Justin, like, uh, two number 10s. People go, oh, yeah, I think we'll play with them. I said, well, we used to do that years ago. Nothing's, you know. That, in those district teams, can you imagine that you would go over and play in West London and they would be from Chelsea, Watford, da, 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 so on and so forth. And then I took an Enfield district team at Spurs, Arsenal. Uh, Watford probably as well. Yeah, no, it would have been Watford. Yeah, yeah Watford, Spurs, like that, that sort of group of people yeah. there. Whoa, you know. And then you go to East London, West Ham, yeah, yeah. Lake Norrie. Yeah, yeah. That sort of group. And they all played against each other. It was so competitive. Nice. You know. It was saying that Saturday mornings, coaches used to get all, you know, run the line, you know, and get all upset and <laughs> give off. It was just brilliant. It was just brilliant for the kids because they mixed. Socially, it was brilliant because they mixed with people who are as good as them. Yeah. And that also, also tucked into those teams were a few of the really good grassroots kids who were pulled up by the bootlaces by these kids in clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all treated each other the same. Grassroots with, when they're with, at Arsenal and you're 
at Rangers. You know, uh, wherever you are. Yeah. I, I know Enfield Rangers, Enfield Rangers, Enfield Rangers, Rangers yeah. or wherever you are, we're all the same. You're on our team. It was a fabulous concept. Absolute fabulous concept. Mm. That's not coming back. So it's a shame, really. Great by the sounds of it, by the sounds of it, it's a shame. On I'd wonder the reasons why. Is it, is it a is it a local thing? Is it a community? Is it a local in terms of the local county, well, local county he, or he, here's local the authority? Thing that really, sort of disappointed me is is the the local one. I think it's a district team near Brighton mm. was charging their players to play. Wow! Because it's run by a private. So all, all of us, all of a sudden, you're scrutinising people who can't afford to play who might be good enough. <laughs> And then I thought, blimey. And in fairness, when it, that's when Howell Wilkinson handed over, you know, district team stopped and county team started to, just when Howell Wilkinson handed over pretty much the running of football to clubs, you know, the academy. So they then, the district team stopped. So in regards to your time uh, in, in national coach mm. educator, national mm. development, um, we, we've seen this huge shift in, in regards to the way that courses are run, um, developed. Um, if you're a learner on a course now, it's a totally different course than probably 10 years ago. The introduction of the Youth Award, I know you you, you was heavily involved yeah. in, in that and in the development and the introduction of the Youth Award amongst others. Um, how do you see that going? Has it been successful? Um I, th I think I think the youth awards were very successful. Yeah, I think one of the successes was the earlier youth awards weren't. You didn't have to pass a test. Yeah, and just people, did the modules. You know, if you if you're a if you're a um, a volunteer coach, you know, you, you, we didn't really understand what if you took grassroots for example, you wouldn't. You'd be amazed at how many coaches take age groups up the ages they don't stay with an age group mm. nines follow their sons or nephews or whatever it is mm. nines tens elevens twelves they go with them mm. there's that thing they're also they're limited time you know they've got jobs or and we didn't really tap into that so well but we're much better at understanding them now but the youth awards were a good step towards you don't you don't have to have an assessment you just come for the you know two days or two four days, days or four so, days or yeah. whatever it was what then what we saw is you've got the a license strand and, and the b license strand which is technical and tactical you know very much tactical and then you've got the advanced youth award which is more integrating the mental psych social all into that the challenge is having a main strand so that if you come to the fa and you start on level one you've got one book yeah and you open that book and if you go on level two, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, but it's just one book. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want six or seven different books. You just want one journey, you know, that's seamless. Mm -hmm. So we're working really hard at getting that that journey seamless. And, and some of the content is just phenomenal. And during the lockdown, the amount of content that we've generated in I think that's everyone, like, every environment. Oh, is the, <laughs> challenge, the challenge is how to use it. Yeah, you know, and where to use it because and again you don't want it again go back to complicate yeah you, it becomes complicated again over complicated yeah. so you've got all this stuff how do we keep the main thrusts of, of the main messages going through all our courses yeah and in fairness people are better at dealing with kids they are better there's no doubt about it they understand practice a bit more you know they understand uh, their behaviour a bit more I'm not saying it's perfect but it's better so they've made great strides, I think. You know, teams are not, you know, are now not necessarily smashing it up the field all the time. They're trying to play. Trying to build it. Trying to build it so everyone's a bit more uh, uh, sort of involved because that means if you play like that, more you, people can get involved. And you're more technically able. And you're more technically able. Yeah. So you're more competent, so you're more confident. All the same. So there's, there's some huge strides been made. What would be that that main thrust? And in the, the women and girls what game is, and boys game together, oh, you know. hundred percent, because uh, and it, it, probably something that I've benefited from in regards to my own my own journey in regards to understanding different environments and 
yes, you want to treat the environment the same, but there's an understanding that those people, though there are different types of environments that you got to have. What we what you touched on before, they got different needs. Yeah, different um, needs and, and different communications with you know you, you know if you're asking a kid and the strength of the youth wars were like if you're taking a a nine year old yeah, yeah he he's ch more child development. It's no use you you know keeping him doing you know sitting him down for twenty minutes because yeah. his attention span is yeah. it's that simple. Yeah. And it's no, you know, he can't do these elaborate practices where there's loads of cones necessarily. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And so it, it, it hit home on more on the linking the football to the child development. Yeah. You know, and the aim is to, you know, is to get kids to, the, the aim going forward is to get, get coaches to think really hard about the individual, mm -hmm. both his technical skills and tactical, tactical skills. Mm -hmm. And then how you, how you mix them in with people and how you deal with them one, one to one. Will there will it oh you probably oh, will there be changes? Does, does that mean changes long term to courses or does that mean I don't think, I think on evolving? It does it evolve I, yeah, a little all bit? All good, all good organisations, uh, you know, all good will reform. Yeah, and reform yeah. means review comes out better. Yeah, yeah, change doesn't necessarily mean it comes out better. Yeah, I'd sure. like to use the word reform. Yeah, sure. You're reforming things because you want it to get better. Yeah, you know, and that and you you're always on the move. Mm. you're always on the move with stuff but what we are doing and which I'm, I'm so pleased is we're going back into history a little bit with Alan Wade and some of the stuff that I know going back <laughs> saying Wade. John Cartwright John uh, Cartwright Dave Sexton uh, Don Howe what were they saying you yeah. know and, and is it any different and yeah. is there some really simple messages why have that, we lost those messages why have we lost don't, don't in order to go forward sometimes you have to drag, check your back, history check your history yeah. because it might already be there you know and recognise some of the fantastic work that's gone on in the past because sometimes you know as well as I do people come into post and want a plaque on the wall and they forget no, everything else was didn't work so I'm going to do this mm. well, actually it did mm. so what good bit why does that do? happen why does that happen where we in certain environments you move forward and almost feel like you have to change it I always think and you always get it and you always hear it as well in regards to either out there in the sort of the, the elite environment where a new manager comes in and almost thinks he's got they've got to scrap everything that's happened before I always, I always someone says to me like they they ask that question they, that, that question lots and I just say Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> what, does, what does that mean? well it, they haven't changed their recipe yeah. for hundred how many years I love, so I love Kentucky right. I, love, I love KFC that's what yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yeah but something must be right <laughs> They ain't changing it. <laughs> something in the spices. There's something There's there. There's something that's <laughs> right about that recipe. <laughs> and you go, well, if, it's, if, it, if it works and it's right, keep it. But yeah. you have to dig back. In, in football, we have to dig back a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. Just go, you know, some of the stuff Glenn Hoddle says, some of the stuff go back further, you know, and, and drag it up a little bit. and Polish it a little bit. Polish it. Yeah. 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 So I think, I think that... that um, uh, I, it's really exciting to be working on, you know, involved in some of the core stuff and things. And and the, we do now a lot of in situ visits. You know, if you're on an A license, you know, like we go to a club and support you in your current environment. Mm. So I'd see one. The other it, has that been better? I mean, I remember, oh, I remember, do, I remember doing coaching badges and it was yeah you feel like you're, you're just building up to that final day yeah, yeah, yeah. you're building up to that final day that nerve-wracking day where you're it's literally pass or fail. it's pass or fail it's competent or not um yeah, well, which has its pros and cons uh, yeah, some yeah. would some would argue i i, I uh, we're working on a thing of what, you know the a question of what we actually test now you know? mm. if we want people to think about individual tactics then we've mm. got to test that mm. If we want them to, to concentrate on team tactics, we've got to test that. Mm. So what we think is valuable, we've got to test it. Mm. In other assess people. And we shouldn't be afraid of assessments. It's just mm. how they're operated. Mm. But we do a lot of in situ visits where we go, go and see them working with their kids, you know, whether they're under nines or under nineteens, you know, and that is infinitely valuable. Mm. You know, because you're not then you're you're in your own environment. You're not coaching coaches. You're not coaching coaches, you're coaching yeah. players yeah. and you can you can go and see them more than once. You can see them when they're ready. And mm. the thing about adult learning is, you know, you, adult learners, we've got to tap into the fact these coaches are adults, they're not kids. 
and we've got to come you know how much do we know about adult learning you know mm. adult learning is about uh, and one of the key parts is I as an adult will sift through the stuff what's in it for me mm. you know if it's not in it for me I'll put it over there because uh, in regards to the kind of the current courses that are available now yeah. and, and in regards to your ones your twos your threes in certain way I think they, 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 there's probably a feel amongst maybe uh, maybe coaches, coach educators as well, because there was a lack of assessment mm. in a in a more formal in a form more formal way. Do you dilute the quality of coaches because they don't have to be competent on that day, so to speak, and go? Do you know what they're actually at the level um, and. As a result, yes, you get more people through and you get more time to work with individuals to hopefully get them to a place, but do you lose the quality? I mean, no, noticeably, maybe not noticeably, the question was around, do they become less technically competent or it's tactical? Not, it, but it's not the test. Yeah. Because, listen, I've passed my driving test and I'm a crap driver. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know, there's no correlation between... The you know, test, yeah. It's looking at assessment for learning. You know how how do you how do you assess people and then know that they that, that you're also assessing for potential. Mm. You know, like I took a lad the other day, and he might not be great now, but oh, he's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ooh. how much leeway do you give to where he is at the moment yeah. because he's got this potential? But the assessment the assessment is is is, is really important because we shouldn't run, steer clear of it. Mm. You know. And we should also, you know, like horses for courses, what course do you really need to go on mm. and what do you want to go on? You know, it's like... You still get that, don't you, where coaches want to just... They just want to run through the badges, yeah. literally. Yeah. They pass a, a level one or a level two and they're asking about the next course. So yeah, even yeah, during yeah. the course, yeah. they're asking everywhere. about the next yeah. course. That happens in education. Yeah, everywhere. yeah. You know, everyone's got a master's degree. Yeah. You know, I thought when I got a master's degree... I thought I'd be in the top. So I'm just ordinary now. <laughs> yeah, Always been. I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> you know, so I think I think the thing with courses is that you, you understand that actually the 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 learn the, the effect on courses is has its limits. Mm. Yeah, most of you know all your learning is done in out out in your so environment. The, you know, we've done really well in in going out and seeing people in their environment because that's where they pick up the learning. Mm. And if you look at clubs now, is is there's a lot of coach development goes on in clubs. Mm. But I still go back to my original point: is you've got to be careful that you don't saturate with detail mm. what is absolutely the simplest game on the planet. Mm. You know, it's like it is, uh, it is so simple. In kids' heads, mm. you know, and it was our challenge is to keep it keep simple. That for them. We can have as much as we want, mm. yeah. But what are you going to give them? Mm. You give them the simplest. You can hoard as much as you want. You know, you can be a professor of football if you like, mm. but he's fifteen, and all he wants to know is this, this, and this. Yeah, A, B, C. And he wants to play, or just A sometimes. He or she wants to play. Yeah. You know, so, so to teach him again, I, I use this thing, and I don't, I don't want to bore you with it. We'll probably have already. It's, it's like this is the role of the coach, right? Is to teach young people a game. Yeah. So how much do you know about teaching? How much do you know about young people? And how much do you know about the game? I like that. That's all you got to worry about. Teach young people the game. Teach young people a game. If I say that to coach, she's not comfortable going. Oh, football coach. Yeah. So no, that's what you're doing. You're teaching young people a game. If you don't want, okay, say I'm teaching young players football, doesn't matter, it's the same, yeah. right? How much do you know about teaching and coaching? How much do you know about the kids and how, or the players? And how much do you know about the game? Yeah. Where are you weak? And where do you need, to, where's your strength? So that's where courses might fill in. So uh, three buckets, player, coach, game. That's it. That's how simple it is. Mm. See what I mean? Nice. Even some of the slow ones you might see it on 
come direct to my seal on Jamie's ball too much and it's talking to us young people, be a pro, train like a pro. Well how do we how do we not professionalise it too early? My view my view, uh, and it's not workable as in the current thing is I don't think kids should go to academies till they're fourteen. I think they could be attached. That that is a that is a that is a that is something that's been floating about for yeah. a few years now, I isn't it? I don't think kids should be because what they then is automatically professionalise the danger is parents are that professionalised, get boots, get all this stuff. Mm. Now I understand that actually, in fairness, for some parents it, it, it's absolutely essential because they they haven't got much money and they need to get the, the boots and the kit and it's easy for them and blah blah blah. blah. But in terms of professionalism, that would help, in my opinion keep people grounded, keeping them in contact with their schoolmates and grassroots, critical that they stay in contact. doesn't mean you can't train and play in the holidays or you can play. I don't, that's why I said dual passports, you know. Mm. You, know you can play both. More football, the better. You know, give, you know, up to a point. But also it's understanding the exclusion and including parents. And, and I've got another thing is academies that are separated from the professional environment can sometimes be more productive. Yeah, beneficial. You know, say, say you're, you know, you're, if they're in the same environment, sometimes that can be quite difficult, I think, for parents because they, they go past the first team car park, mm. you know, and you, you know, but you've got to have some way of saying this is, pro, this is, um, the professional environment but this you're is not the there. Youth, this is the you're youth environment there. and sometimes you get kids at nine they get all the trappings of someone who's earned the right to get a pro you see what i mean i know he's earned the right to get into academy but get that but he hasn't done the he hasn't done the hard miles yet mm. and i think there should be a thing about uh i said a palace when i first went there well, it, it didn't didn't happen it would never happen and i said well don't give him anything you know give him a pair of shorts and then in the second year, they're out, give them shorts and socks. <laughs> or just give them a shirt to should I stay with, take home with them. You know, do something where you you slowly drip feed that you're not there yet, yeah? And you've got to earn the right to be there. And when you uh, when you get your a scholarship, that's, and you are an employee, you can then say you're professional mm. when you're an employee. Even when you're doing a I guess sponsorship. So, yeah, not, certain environments try try to do it in different types of ways. Like, for example, certain environments, you can't have a number. You know, you, they have a player yeah, number. It's, you a, can't, it's, it's an you, old age problem. Yeah. You know, and it, it's not, but also, coaches have a responsibility. Their expectations of kids on the pitch. Yeah. Feeds kid, into it. Feeds into it, definitely. Positioning too early, you're right back. You already professionalised him. You already slotted him into a yeah. role. This is where you're going to be successful in a professional game. This is where game. you're going to get sex. Now I get in the end that you, there's a job description attached to, you know, if you're a centre back, you've got, eventually you've got to be like this. Otherwise, you're not going to be a centre back at this club. Mm. But when do you do that? You know, you see people put into positions really early on. I think that you can, that could be a. a a defining moment where you, you leave that open t for a long longer time. I get with goalkeepers, I understand that. And some players are out and out, positional. You know, but the professionalism is a premature professionalism. You know, that's that that covers a lot of ground. You know, you go on tournaments, you know, and kids are so I, I went to a tournament and, and and a club which remained nameless, the kids were just like locked in. You know, there was everything about it was just stifled. Yet, another club, and I, I can name it because they were bit. It was Reading, actually. The kids, I think, they were having ice creams, yeah, <laughs> during the breaks, and they were just having a laugh. They won the tournament comfortably. Yeah. <laughs> just through it. Now, that might be you know, not the reason, but I, I saw two completely yeah, different contrasting things. environments. You know what I mean, and this was trying to be professional, but was nowhere near tapping in to the youth, to the fun that the kids were having over yeah. here, and lifelong memories that they might have. Oh, they, yeah, and it was Reading, and it was a couple of mates of mine that were running it, and I know what they were like, and they were just fabulous. It was yeah. fabulous because the kids just went on the pitch and free blew blew the tournament to bits. Mm, yeah, love it, yeah. love it. 
I mean, we always, we always talk about sort of advice when our guests come in because of their experience and knowledge and, and what sort of things. And I've probably got a few questions to you. Oh, sort of like, if you, if you could summarise um, what, what you would say to these individuals. And I would, I would probably start with, the, start with the child because we've talked a lot about the child here. And what would you do, what would you say to a child just entering the environment at, uh, let's say, 10? What would you say to that child? Can, before I answer that, yeah. can I just say I see children as children and young people all the way up to 21. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? This sense. is your premature... Pre- I don't see a 17-year-old... You know, adult. Like, yeah, my daughter's 19, my son is 22, but my daughter's 19, she's still a kid. Yeah, 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 you know, and I don't, you know, children. We're loath to call children, you know, children, but they're young people. Yeah, yeah, for a long period of time, and we've got to prolong this childhood in inverted commas. Mm. That's my anyway. Uh, what would I say to him? Mm. Or her? I would say to him, I think, I would. It's an obvious thing to say that I want you to enjoy every minute of it. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'd like to say to him. You know, if there's anything you need, we're here for you. You know, but I, I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> mm. I would just just say, well, come and play football. Mm. You know, come in and play football. That's what you're here for. And if you're not enjoying it, tell us. All you got to do is make sure somebody knows you're not enjoying it. So I don't know one thing, but that would be big to me. Which isn't always easy for young people because they... Well, pro- parents will. Yeah, parents definitely will. They're hundred percent. I just always think with young people, they correlate not enjoying it to not playing well and not enjoying the environment to I don't want to be here and what that just saying that what I'd, that could, right, could I, have. I thought about the question now. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I, would, I would say be yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're here because we like you. Yeah, as a player and a person. Yeah. And if you're not enjoying it, let someone know. Yeah. But be yourself. Because sometimes they come into academies and they go, "Who's he?" Yeah, that's not the player. That's not the player. We we got him in because of this reason, and now yeah, yeah. where's he gone? Where's that person gone? Yeah. You know. Okay. So I think that's important. Aspiring coach, young coach, or maybe not young, just new into coaching. Um, yeah. Do you know what I'd say? Show us your personality. Mm. I don't think. I said, show them and me, if I'm with you, your personality. Yeah. Show us. I take it you're organised. I take it you're all this. I'll give you that. Now show us your personality. Yeah. And your knowledge. I get that. But I want to see your personality. I want to see you. Well, if you remember, you go back to school days and stuff. I don't remember teachers. I don't remember teachers for what they told me. <laughs> I just remember their personalities. Yeah, yeah. I remember the bad ones and the good ones. And the average ones, well, they, they lost somewhere. But, yeah. so, show us your personality. And do you know what? I don't think we recruit anything like strong enough on, on coach personalities. Mm. What do you think the reason is that is? Is it because a, good, a strong personality could... Because what do we value? What do we value in this country? Organisation, yeah. discipline. Yeah, hard work. Hard work. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. But they're gimmies. Yeah. If you're coming now want to see your personality. Yeah. What's he like? If he, oh, no, he, you know, he's like, okay, well, sorry. Not everyone has the personality to work with children or young people. Yeah. That's the point. I don't think, it, you know, I don't think, I think we think that just because they've got a qualification, they're hard working and they fill in forms and they do all this, and we're all, yeah, yeah, he's going to make a great coach because he does this. He might do, but actually, working with these kids, where's your personality? Mm. Because that will be the difference. Because you've got to be inspiring. Two things for me. Are you inspiring and are you informed? Mm. Two eyes. You've got two eyes. <laughs> yeah. But here's another two. Yeah. Right? Four eyes. <laughs> are you inspiring? Are you inspiring and are you informed? So if you don't know how the kid learns, you're not informed. So you can't be inspiring. Mm. If you don't know is um, that he actually hates this or that or the other, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't respond to something, then you're not informed, so you can't be inspiring. If you don't know about the game, 
you can't be inspiring. Mm. You know, if you don't know the emotions that come back from the game and how the game works and how that actually, it's a journey into frustration, anger, joy, all these things. Yeah, if you can't feel that as a coach, you're not inspiring. Because mm. you don't feel it, because you won't have empathy. You won't be able to see it. So I'm a big thing on inspira inspirational coaches and informed coaches. Mm -hmm. We can help you with being informed, but you've got to link the two. Yeah. And that, put that with personality, and you would recruit some really fantastic people. And it's about fantastic people, you know. And know, you, know your subject and know your subjects. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's a very good, very good piece of information for aspiring. Then we probably talk about a parent. So you've got a parent in an environment. What would you say to a parent? Oh, I'm going to say, depends who it is. Um, Here's something about parents. Yep. Yeah. Right. My observation. If you talk about football, and uh, this will be generalised, forgive me, yeah, the dads will be all over it when they're doing well. Yeah. If you wrong the kid in terms of welfare, watch for the mums. <laughs> they will come from behind the bushes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you, one thing you've got to do with parents is do not associate the football and disassociate the football and the welfare and disassociate the mum from the dad because you think the dad knows about football because yeah. the mum will know and the dad's will as well but yeah. essentially the mum is after the welfare yeah you know might, might be given well, yeah, yeah 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 D different different yeah different. so might flip in certain family uh, house one, might, one, might flip in certain households one in, I'm talking to the parents yeah, yeah. yeah or carers yeah. unless they're split and yeah all, 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 all the things that go with that I would say, let us do it. Trust us to do it mm -hmm. for them. You need to, yeah, look after him. Look after his welfare, yeah. Make sure he's all right. And if he's not enjoying it, tell me. Mm. Your job is to feed back to me anything that you think, so, yeah, yeah. And leave the football to us, right? Unless, of course, it's Rio Ferdinand's son or something like that. <laughs> he might have an input. No, no. But... Do you see what I mean? Yeah. I think you can give the parents a real license to say, because I said to a mum, uh, I said to a mum, actually the other week, I said, your job, as if you don't mind me saying, I said, I don't, how can I support my son? I said, you already do, you're his mum. Mm. Yeah? So be his mum. If he's upset, be there for him. Be there for him if he's upset. But if there's anything that we need to know, you need to tell us. Mm. Yeah, unless it's confidential and all that. And if it's a dad, I said, look, we can have football conversations, but I think you can lay those sort of ground. Don't mind a bit of opinion, but leave the football to us because that's why he's here. Mm. Yeah, and hopefully yeah. that helps. Well, might not, mind. <laughs> but it well, does yeah, help. hopefully if if there's clear if, if there's a clear them. relationship and a clear you have understanding, to include them, you know, and in our coaching programs and things like that. So this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. One of the problems we're dealing with parents is you. you it's we tell them what and we tell them how, but we don't tell them why. Mm. And the biggest thing for companies now is, is that's how they sell a lot of goods, is they, why are we doing this? Mm. Yeah, why are we we're doing this because of, right, I'm playing you here because of this. You're not playing this week because of this. Why, 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 why? Why am I doing that? Why does he do futsal on a Tuesday night? Well, we're doing that because of this, 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 this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. I, the why I, do I do agree with that. Yeah, yeah sometimes it, things are done without the why, and then you get the questions because there's lack of understanding. If you give them the understanding, then hopefully and, and you get less And it's human nature, wise. isn't it? That if you if you don't know, you will make you would join with other people that don't know, and then you'll come up with all your sorts own understanding. Because you can see them at the side of the pitch, they're all gathering. <laughs> You know, like Definitely, I know that too well. The lions are circling. <laughs> yeah, I know that too well. Um, listen, Paul, that has been absolutely fabulous. Um, loads of insight and understanding. Um, loads of stories that gets you thinking. 
in mm. regards to the environment, the, the, the rights, the, the good stuff that's going on, but also the things that we probably could be a lot better at. Um, as a community, as a culture, as a, as a sport, um, definitely for the young people. So just thank you for that, uh, from myself and the gang. Absolute blast. Great fun. Thank yeah, you. excellent. That was wicked. That was good. It was My, all right. That was very good. That was very good. Loads of stuff. Thank you. <laughs> oh, just stretch your legs, mate. Jesus. Oh.